Welcome everybody to DIY Food Plot Pro, your channel to teach you how to, what to plant to hold big mature white tails. We've got an exciting segment today. This is corn part two. If you haven't seen corn part one, jump back, watch that one first, and then we're going to hit on this one. There's a lot of interesting topics that we're going to discuss for today. Um, no till or conventional. That's a huge one for people, right? Frog strangling rain right after you plant. Is that a West Kentucky thing or do a lot of other people know what that is? Okay. Drop your comment down. Let me know if y'all have ever heard of frog strangler, if that's just a West Kentucky thing. Um, and also, can I plant corn without equipment? That is a gigantic question. We want, everybody wants to know that. A lot of us don't have the equipment to be able to plant corn. Can I plant corn without having any equipment? What equipment does it take? I am going to show you, I'm going to draw it out in detail for you so that you know that question. You know the answer, okay? Let's get started with planting rate. We are looking at, if we're with a planter and we're planting in rows, we're on 30 inch rows, we're looking at about seven inches apart on seed, okay? That's basically all it is. When you're planting, you want to be digging that seed up a little bit when you first start and checking, okay? Or my 10, or my foot, 18 inches, seven inches is perfect. A little more, a little less, okay, but seven is perfect. Planting time. You are going to be tempted when you see the big farmers in your area. If you're in ag country, they're going to be rolling a good month before you are. They have four, five, ten thousand 10,000 acres. They don't have time to wait. They have huge equipment. If a late freeze comes and it runs it, they can be in there. They can work that ground. They can replant it before you can even get your ground ready to plant again, okay? Wait until conditions are right, okay? Do this right and do it light. Don't do it wrong and have to do it long, multiple times. That's one of the biggest issues that we get into with food plots is we start kind of, well, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do, the conditions aren't perfect. Corn, everything needs to be pretty pretty much right, okay? Listen to what I'm saying, watch what I'm saying, write this stuff down, re-watch the video. This is all really important stuff to make sure you've got a successful plot. So in our area, pretty much 15th of April is gonna be our last frost or freeze date, okay? So with that being said, I wanna wait about a month after that. I don't want any chance of a frost or a freeze messing with my food plot. I don't wanna to have to redo this again, it's a nightmare to have to do it more than once, okay? Let's take our time and let's do it right. So I'm waiting about a month afterwards. That does two things, right? One, that ensures that you're not gonna have the frost, the freeze. Corn can take a little bit of it. Let's, let's not take the chance, okay? That's not a, a risk that we're willing to take with a food plot. We want it done, we want it done correctly so that we have something to hunt over in the fall and we're not scrambling to throw something out there to be able to hold some deer. We do this right, we're gonna hold a lot of deer. Another thing that it does, second thing that it does, if we go out 15th of April and we go to start planting, our corn's gonna to have to sit there for forever in the fall before hunting season actually starts. In our case, our rut's mid-November. I don't want my corn done in the 20th of August and gonna to have to sit there for three or four months, okay? I would much prefer it to get done doing its thing into September and then it's ready to start hunting in October. October, November, December. The longer you can let it last, the more chances that you're going to have. As the, as the natural foods diminish, your plot is going to get more and more and more attraction. Okay? Planting depth, inch and a half. That's where we'd like to stay. If you're conventional, that's going to be, we're not going to be able to make sure that we're right on inch and a half, okay? Anywhere around that range is fine. If you go down to two, that's fine. If you go up to one, that's fine. We're not trying to make 300 bushel corn here where it's absolutely critical that the corn's in the perfect location. Get the seed covered where the turkeys and the crows don't get to it, okay? No till or conventional. Conventional tillage, what is it? That is where you're going to go out there with a plow, a disc, a tiller. You're going to work that ground. No-till is when you go out and you spray a couple times in advance and you take a no-till planter, which I will post a picture of, you can see, 
and you're just going to plant right through without disturbing 98% of the soil. You're disturbing only where your trench is running. Okay. So most of us are going to be with conventional, which is no problem. I've, I've done that a million times. It's not, that's not an issue at all. It's easier for no-till, but um, conventional is no trouble. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Is the ground too wet? If we go out there and we pull a chunk of ground out and we start molding it, okay, we're going to form it into a ball. If it sits in that perfect pretty ball that you just molded it into, it's too wet. Don't do it. You're going to have sidewalk compaction. You may get a germ. You may get your corn up. And then all of a sudden, it's going to start turning yellow because the roots can't get out like they're supposed to and get that fertilizer. Wait until the soil is right. Patience. Do it right. Do it light. I keep saying that. <clears throat> Planting before a rain. That's a big one that there's not a lot of knowledge about on here. Don't go out right before a big heavy rain event and plant this stuff. I have done it. And I have had really bad results with it, okay? My younger years, I didn't know. I should have been planting. I was off on a vacation. I got home. The ground was perfect. I thought, it's time. I'm rolling out. So I got my planter. I hooked to it. I planted that 30-acre field as fast as I could. The rain was a couple hours away. As soon as I got through the field, a frog strangler rain starts coming on, right? I'm talking, it is absolutely pouring. I went back two weeks later and my population was very little. And I'm going to tell you, that was the worst field of corn that I've ever produced. You had to disc it. You had to spray it. You're planting uh, glyphosate tolerant seed. So glyphosate will kill it. If you double up corn, that's a nightmare in itself. Um, so don't do that, please. 48 hour minimum of dry time after you plant. And then you're fine. Okay. You're fine. Give it 48 hours. Make sure if you if your ground's right and you've got three days before a rain event comes in, put that stuff in the ground and roll on. You're going to be fine. Can I plant corn without equipment? Yeah, you can. And I'm going to show you how. It's not going to be a lot of fun, but it's part of the experience, right? And it's enjoyable. We, we all enjoy going out there and working our land and, and helping our deer herd. That is going to be the best work that you ever did. Putting that time, the effort, you're going to see results. You're going to be proud of it. It's going to be a really enjoyable experience for you. It's going to be a lot of work on the front end. I'm not trying to sugarcoat that. A lot of work on the front end. But that is going to be something that can pay a lot of dividends for you. If you don't and you, then you wait till, gosh, a month before season, we've all done this. We've all waited. Our, our original one failed or we didn't get around to it. And then we went to throw some something out two, three, four weeks before season. We get marginal results and it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Plant this now. Do the hard work now in the spring and the summer so that when the fall comes, you can be in your deer stand and having awesome, awesome hunts. Seeing tons of deer, tons of bucks, tons of does. It's a lot more fun. You can take your family, your kids. It's enjoyable. We all want to see a lot of deer. And this plot gives you that. It's a deer puller. It's a magnet, right? It takes them a little while to find it. When they find it, they're going to hammer it, especially as the fall foods start to diminish. The acorns, when the farmers harvest their stuff, they're going to leave you. They're going to leave you for a few weeks, and they're going to go to that fresh-cut cornfield, fresh-cut bean field. Then it's going to come a big rain, and that stuff loses a lot of its pulling power to deer. And they're going to go right back to yours. It's a beauty part about standing corn. It can rain and rain and rain and rain. It's not going to ruin your corn. Once it's produced, it's produced. You got it. You're there. Until they eat it all, you've got the preferred food source in the fall and winter time. Okay? <clears throat> so, can I plant corn without equipment? What equipment do I need? Basics, you're going to need some type of spreader for your fertilizer, for your lime, for your seed. <clears throat> That's going to be pretty important. It doesn't take a, a super high dollar one. You know, mine, I think it's like 25 bucks. Bought at the local farm store. Just a decent little spreader. A tiller of some sort. You have a tractor tiller, that's a that's ideal. That's the best way. Or a disc. Disc works wonderful if you have a disc. If you don't have a disc and you've got a tiller, we're, we're fine. If you don't have a tiller, you're going real old school and we're going to do a hand tiller. 
I'm going to show you in a video this summer. We're still in the winter here. I can't do it right now. I'm going to show you this summer a video of me doing this old school. I'm telling, I'm t it's going to be ridiculous. But I'm going to show you what you can do with absolutely zero equipment. The little tiller. Little handheld garden tiller. That's all we're going to use in a little sprayer. Okay? Brings us to our next one, a sprayer. You need something to spray. Can you, you can use a backpack sprayer. Not a lot of fun, but you can use that. Most of us have four-wheeler sprayers or a ranger sprayer. That's what I'm that's what I want to do. What I want to do, I want to set that boom up. If I have a ranger or fuller spreader, it's real hard because we don't know where we're just spraying. It's real tempting to do a 15-foot swath. Right? We don't have the phone. We don't have the GPS that the farmers do. How do we spray and not make a daggum mess? Well, here's how we do it. We put our spray boom the width of our tires. So when you're spraying, you got two tires running right here. Let me put this down. You got two tires running right here. Your next pass, put this tire where this tire's tracks are. Move over. Continue doing that. You don't miss anything that way. Sprayer. Critical. 15 to 20 gallons of water per acre. Don't go 10. That's what the farmers use. They have a specialized nozzles that spread perfectly. We do, Most of us don't have that. 15 to 20 gallons of water per acre. So if we are doing conventional, what are we going to do? We are going to make sure this plot is sprayed. Please, please, please do not go out there when the grass is this high and take your tractor and hit it four or five times with a, with a tiller and then comment on here and be like, well, this, what this dude's saying is not working. Yeah, I can't get my ground in good shape. That's because you didn't spray. You didn't watch the whole video and do everything that I'm telling you to do. Spray two, three, four weeks in advance. Go back. If it's greening up again, spray it again. Okay? Keep that stuff killed before you spray. Right? I'd rather you do that on the front end. I don't care if it's in back in the late winter, early, early spring. Spray it. Kill that stuff down. Get that junk off there. Give that time, time. Give that chemical time to work to make that stuff go back into the ground and make your tilling a lot easier when you get ready to till. Till it. Spray it. Till it. Till it up really good. You want that ground good, powdery, loose, okay? You don't want that to have chunks all in it and all that kind of stuff. If it means you have to till it again, till it again. Till it until you have a pretty good, it doesn't have to be absolute, throw it up in the air and it all blows away powder. You want it tilled up pretty good though because it's going to be really hard to cover that seed if it's not tilled up pretty solid. So we're then, we do that, we're going to spray it, we're going to till it, and then we're going to spread it. Get out there and spread it. With this hand spreader, conventional till, I want you to spread about 20 pounds per acre. With a If that's a 50 pound bag of corn, it's going to have 80,000 kernels in it. 20 pounds is going to give us 32,000 population. Yes, that's more than what I want you to have. We're going to lose some when we're doing when we're doing it like this. We have to plant a little bit more seed. We're not going to have as good a results if we're planting with a planter. Okay, we're going to have some seed on top of the ground. We're going to have some seed that's too deep. We're going to have some seed that's not deep enough. So plant 32,000 20 pounds per acre. Okay, spread it. And then if you have a disc, go back and lightly disc it. This is this part is going to be on you. You need to have a tape measure out there of some sort. You need to till along for 5, 8, 10 feet, right? Then you need to get off the tractor, turn the PTO shaft off. Make sure you dang do that. You don't want to be wrapped up in that PTO shaft. Go to the back behind your tiller and then start digging. Take your knife your screwdriver, whatever you got, and dig a little bit and find that seed. See how deep it is. Remember, we're shooting for an inch and a half. That's perfect. You're not going to have all of it covered. That's just part of it. We're not going to have it all covered. I wish we was, but with conventional, that's why we're planting 32,000 instead of 25 or less, okay? We're going to have some waste. That's just part of it, but it's, it's, it's still very viable. So, to recap, what are we going to do? We're going to spray one or two times. We're going to keep that clean. We're going to till it, till it up really good. We're going to go in with a spreader and we're going to spread it with a hand or with a ranger, whatever you want to do. Take a disc if you have it, preferably a disc, and disc that in. If you don't have a disc, a tiller. 
till that stuff into the ground. Like I said, get off and make sure that your depth is right. You're going to be good to go, okay? That's why the herbicide tolerant corn is important because here in a couple of weeks when you get some rain, you are going to start getting tons and tons of pressure. You're going to need that glyphosate tolerant corn so that you can spray that glyphosate over the top and not kill your corn and kill all the competition that's coming because there's going to be a lot of competition. When you throw 130 pounds of nitrogen on something, there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of weed pressure. And then you need to go back. You're probably going to have to do that three times, the spraying, to keep that stuff clean, maybe two times. If you see a plant that you're spraying that's not dying, right, and you've got it, it's all grass, right, and you go out there and you spray with glyphosate and you see this one plant that's just dark green as anything, pull it up. Pull it up and don't let it go to seed. You don't want to have to deal with that year after year, okay? Doubled up corn. Corn does not do well doubled up. If you're in a, if you're planting with a planter, don't, when you come to plant your end rows first, right? Your rows down here, your rows down here, and then plant back and forth. Don't cross up your rows. Don't over, don't, when you get to your end rows, when your seed gets the end rows, pull up, stop planting. Corn does not good, do good doubled up. And this goes back to conventional tillage. I'm telling you 20 pounds. Do not throw 50 pounds out there and say, well, 20 is good, 50 is better. Don't do it. It's gonna, you're going to make all kinds of little ears. And if you don't get the rain and you're that thick a population, it's not gonna, it's, you're not going to make anything. Okay. This is a sweet spot as far as it's going to yield a good chunk. If it gets rain, if it doesn't rain, it's still thin enough population that you're going to have some corn. Don't plant too much. Corn does not do good that way. Chemicals. We've already talked about it. Glyphosate. That's the important, very, very, very important thing that we're, that we're going to spray on this corn crop to keep it killed down. Okay. That's why that herbicide tolerant variety is so important. If you don't have glyphosate tolerant, don't spray your corn with glyphosate. It's going to kill it, just like it's going to kill all the weeds and grass, okay? So make sure that you're using a herbicide-resistant variety. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video today. Please, please, please drop me some reviews, some comments down there. Let me know what do you want to see, okay? I'm always willing to help if I know what needs helping, okay? I don't, I'm, I'm going to post a ton of videos coming up with a, tons of food plots that I've tried, that I've planted successfully, and I want to teach you, let me know what you think, okay? Like, subscribe, share with your friends, let your buddies know. I really appreciate it. Hope we can grow this site together, and I can give you the tools needed for to raise food plots successfully in this fall to have some phenomenal hunts. Thank you. We'll see you guys later.